Good evening, everybody. My name is Colette Farrell, and I'm the director of the Dread Arts Centre in Drogheda County Louth. And I am delighted to welcome you all to this beautiful exhibition, Vestige from Louth Craftmark. The exhibition will run over December. It will be open Tuesday to Saturday, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. daily. And hopefully we will be able to reopen again on January the 5th, and it will run up to the 30th of January. Now, for those of you who are unable to visit the exhibition, we will be sharing this short film with conversations with some of the artists and the makers online and our social media platforms from early next week. There will also be an online catalogue. And finally, a new addition to our website, a viewing room where you will be able to see all of the work together and also individually with details of the medium and the prices. So I'm going to hand you over now to Quiva McCarthy, Chairperson of Loud Craftmark. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Colette. Um, welcome, everyone, and thanks for coming. Um, it's been an extraordinary year, bookended by two Loud Craftmark exhibitions. We opened Glowing Works in Anton at the end of February, and then lockdown hit. And now we're emerging from a second lockdown, and we're here with Vestige and uh, I couldn't be prouder. Um, so, it's been difficult at times to find the necessary headspace to be creative, but I'm so heartened by the perseverance of all the artists that submitted to the Vestige exhibition. Um, a lot of very beautiful work didn't make it into this space. Um, so I'd like to thank all of the members, all of the committee. I'd like to thank Colette and Vivian and Brian, um, who selected and curated a really beautiful show. Um, if ever there was a demonstration of optimism, I think, it's here, it's in the need to continue to create in difficult times, it, albeit if we don't have a choice to do it. And um, as we reflected here on what we might leave behind, we actually ended up beating a path to the future. So um, with that, I would like to thank you all again and introduce you to Vivian Byrne, who is the chairperson of Andrahid, or Dedrahid even, sorry. and. Um, one of the selection panel. Thank you. Okay, well, my name is Vivian Byrne. I'm uh, one of the selection panel here at the Drahid Arts Centre along with my, my colleague and friend, Brian Hegarty, and also Colette Farrell. And we are delighted to have this show here in the Drahid Arts Centre. The show was a really, it was a very difficult selection because as you know, uh, like Craftmark of a very, very, uh, high level of excellence and they're very well regarded around both the country nationally and internationally. So we got a lot of really, really good quality, I mean good quality, wonderful skill. But what really struck us within this particular exhibition was under the heading of vestige, it's kind of appropriate maybe at this point at looking at the trace of things that were, that are now gone. Uh, and these are the remnants and these are the representations of times, materiality, um, really inventive uses of materials from the clay, from the Boyne River, uh, from the cliffs of Moher, charcoal made from, from the Irish Sea, from the, from the silt of the Irish Sea. Uh, part, it, it refers to the body, elements of the body that are no longer, um, you know, in evolution uh, as part of us. The human condition to make marks, the importance of that, the beauty of age, uh, the idea that somebody le that a, a creature leaves its own shell. And to house those works here, and I know I haven't covered everybody, there's, there's uh, uh, um, representations of, of the letterpress and language and, 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 the, and the tracks that life leaves or, or the tracks that we make during life. And it was really interesting to, that these works suggested themselves almost at points that they belong here and they belong in this beautiful space in the Drehid Arts Centre. Um, and we have a lovely space. And it's really nice to house them here because they have enough room to breathe and to add their poignancy and the, and the brevity of the works and that idea of mourning because some of these works are very, very personal. Um, so it is a real, real pleasure to have them here and it's really important, it's a very important exhibition uh, for us. Um, 
So with that in mind, um, I'd like to thank all the artists for all the work and all the submissions because uh, this has been a real joy. And we hope that you enjoy this show and hope that, um, that, you, get, that you also feel the level of, um, of, of contemplation, I guess, but also hope. Because there are, out of each piece, there is a hope for the future. And I think, as Kiva mentioned earlier on, she's alluded to that also. So thanks very much. As a printmaker, my response to the team of Vestige was to look at what I already had in terms of um, print possibilities. And I selected items that I could print directly from um, letterpress cases of wooden movable typeface, for example, and um, discarded metal objects that I had sitting around my garden uh, covered in rust that I knew I could extract an image from. Um, I began by just exploring prints um, on small uh, squares of paper. I accumulated many of these and um, began then to assemble them together into a grid and discovered that this was maybe the way forward for this work. And um, if we look at the um, theme of sort of order and chaos within the work from the ordered fonts in their tray, moving across the work and dissipating into space, um, reminding us of maybe the theme of entropy which could be applied to this work. Um, if we think about the grid opening from left to right and into the gallery space, we are inclined to, um, well I am, uh, think of the Japanese ma, which is about uh, leaving intervals for contemplation. But this work, for me, takes on the space of the wall, but also the space of the gallery. Um, the colour in the work is, um, comes from just the rust print uh, and white lettering from the, the movable type and it's all framed, if you like, by a wash of acrylic blue and um, the effect of this is to um, illuminate the work and allow that amber colour of the rust to shine. Um, I've always been interested in the notion of um, visual poetry within my work. And uh, for me, this work um, it can be looked at um, both as individual squares, it can be looked at as small groupings of squares, and it can be looked at as a whole. And um, when you think of it that way, it, for me at any rate, it's reminiscent of a symphony. This piece is called Seashell Remnant and uh, recently I was trying to figure out how I could get people towards my stoneware forms, you know, to look at them and more particularly to look into them. And I wanted to find a way to try and generate life in the interior space. So I was working to solve that problem and I discovered that fusing decals on the inside surface added a vibrancy to the work. A bit like uh, the way mother of pearl on the inside of a seashell, you know, adds a kind of a, a hidden softness. And uh, it's all the same material, but the colour and the opalescence, you know, add um, a beauty to it. Um, a kind of mystery. So the Irish coastline is um, a huge source of inspiration for my work as a ceramic artist and um, particularly fishing ports. The nets and the hawser lines and the debris and all of that are huge treasures that I've collected and documented um, this piece it was inspired by um, the, 
remains of a seashell. And on the inside, the images are uh, the remnants of the beautiful city of Venice, which I think itself is the epitome of vestige. Thanks. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Rachel Tinniswood and I'm an artist who works from uh, Bridge Street Studios, which is a collective of artists, eight women artists. This piece, Curved Trace, is a bit of a departure from my usual work in that I usually use a lot of colour, vibrant and subtle. So it proved to be a bit of a challenge for me um, and I did experiment with stitch, coloured stitch, because um, I just couldn't let go of that, that idea of colour in a piece. Um, but after a, a while of making s a number of the white, the little white cones, I kind of really liked the way they sat together and just the calmness of the whiteness. So I, I was intrigued to carry on with the process. So um, yeah, I made lots of them and they kind of formed patterns on my table, but I really liked the circular shape. So this is why they've, they've evolved into a, a circular piece here. Now the little indentations here and the marks are made from the tools of my trade, which is a sewing needle. So most of the cones have been punctured with a sewing, a sewing needle and the stitch has been hand stitched and machine stitched. So this again actually forms the whole idea of the piece because that became quite therapeutic and I think that added to the whole kind of stillness and the calmness of the piece. So this is curved trace. Uh, this piece is called uh, Ocean Library um, and it's a charcoal drawn on paper. Um, I conceived of the whole piece, so the whole idea around vestige of being a kind of cyclical having a cyclical quality to it. Um, and by that, I mean, I'll explain. I, I meant using the materials and the subject matter and everything kind of turned into a cycle for me. So to explain that, um, I used charcoal to make this. I made the charcoal myself using driftwood that I picked up on the beach, in Whitestown up, uh, up near Dundalk and Carlingford. So it was kind of thrown up. I seen it as being a, a vestige or remains of a process and an energy that was thrown up on the beach, these little pieces of driftwood. Um, I didn't know what I was getting because I don't know what kind of wood any of that is. So I made my own charcoal by, you know, you put it in the can, put it in a fire, high heat, take it out and it's black charcoal and it's great and you can make all sorts of marks with it. So what I wanted to do was um, make some drawings of the, the element or the element that produced the charcoal. So there was like a whole double, triple thing going on there. Um, so I took myself to the west coast of Ireland to do them because I thought, yeah, you know, the Cliffs of Moor, there's lots, some really ravishing kind of waves and it's really dramatic and I can make, make the drawings from that. And I actually I did lots of drawings of waves, but I actually, the drawing ended up quite still um, because when I was like drawing on the cliffs, it was actually the, the rock formations that really got my attention um, and again they're another vestige of elements so these they're they're just so beautiful and they look so soft and so kind of um, fresh even though they're something like 300 million years in the making um, you know there's these beautiful curves and folds they're all just layered up and they actually do remind me of books and pages in a book um, and what they'll actually tell you if you can if you know the language you can read the stories and the history of 300 million years of life and energy and elemental forces working on them. So um, that's how I came to produce this image um, and uh, there was kind of focusing on those, so um, on, the, on those layers. So again they're a vestige of, so we've got all the elements in there, there's fire and water and earth and air went into the production of these and that's a vestige of that kind of energy working through the world. Mm -hmm.